Will Pluto be the final habitable world when the sun turns red giant? Within 5 billion years, the sun will begin to die and become a red giant, increasing its size and the temperature of the entire solar system. In the process, life on Earth will vanish, but the most distant frozen worlds will become warmer and possibly habitable. In this scenario, Pluto is the last world that humans could inhabit before the sun dies completely. Could we relocate humanity to Pluto after the sun dies? What would life be like on Pluto? Will it meet all of the needs for the survival of the human race? Come find out with us. The Death of the Sun, A Terrible and Unavoidable Conclusion Today we know that the sun will not shine forever since its fuel hydrogen will run out in roughly 5,000 million years. When this happens, the sun's gravity will compress the core, heating it enough to initiate helium fusion in a layer around the nucleus. This shell will expand causing the star to enlarge and cool, eventually transforming it into a red giant. The sun will lose much of its mass during this phase due to stellar wind, which will strengthen as the star expands. Finally, after around 5 billion years, the sun will shed its outer envelope, generating a planetary nebula that will spread throughout the solar system. Finally, in the last stage, the sun's core will be entirely exposed, becoming a white dwarf star that will gradually cool over billions of years. But, before this stage, what happens to the planets when the sun reaches the red giant stage? The end of everything. The sun will become huge enough to engulf the inner planets, including Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth, during the red giant phase. However, the sun's expansion can lead the Earth to travel far enough away to avoid being devoured. Even if Earth and Mars survive, they will become scorched and barren worlds. These planets' oceans and atmospheres will boil and lose any water they may have stored. They will transition from habitable planets to scorched and airless worlds like Mercury. The gaseous planets, such as Jupiter and Saturn, will survive the sun's expansion, but their ultimate fate is unknown, whether they will survive the sun's growth into a red giant or be expelled into intergalactic space is still being contested. The sun will be so hot and brilliant during the red giant stage that most of the solar system will be annihilated. Although Saturn's ring system is the most well known, all four gas giants have rings. These rings are mostly formed of rocks and frozen minerals including water ice, methane ice, and carbon dioxide. These ices will not only melt or evaporate as a result of the sun's high energies, but the individual molecules of the gases will be so energetic that they will be expelled from the solar system. The same will be true for the water-rich moons that orbit these planets. The frigid moon Europa now has a surface temperature of roughly 110 Kelvin or minus 163 Celsius. That means it might reach temperatures of around 770 Kelvin or 497 Celsius by the time the sun has completed its red giant phase. Naturally, there will be times when things are warmer, but as the star clock ticks down, Europa will become considerably hotter until all of its water evaporates. Enceladus, a Saturn moon, will experience the same fate. Titan, which has a lot of frozen water and a surface environment rich in hydrocarbons, is further away. If there was ever a planet that could get intriguing with Earth-like habitability conditions, it would be Titan. If Titan's surface temperature is currently at 94 Kelvin or minus 179 Celsius, it may warm up to about 25 degrees Celsius. Titan, like Europa, is expected to reach 680 Kelvin or 407 Celsius once the Sun achieves its maximum luminosity. That is not conducive to the development of living things. Almost all of the moons orbiting Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune will shrink dramatically as their atmospheres evaporate, their outer layers melt and disintegrate, and just the rock and metal cores of these satellite planets remain. Even some moons, such as Titan or Iapetus, which are almost exclusively composed of volatile materials, could become extinct as a result of solar winds. The surface temperature of the Sun will fall during the red giant phase, but the surface temperatures of surrounding planets will continue to rise. For example, the Earth's surface can reach temperatures of over 1000 degrees Celsius, causing it to melt and evaporate. Temperatures will rise on the gas planets as well, but not as much as on the inner planets. This is due to the fact that the energy they will receive from the Sun will be significantly reduced. In summary, the solar system's eight planets and moons will be utterly inhospitable. They will all become scorching, arid balls incapable of supporting life. What about Pluto then?
Humanity's Last Sanctuary Pluto's story is a little different from the rest. This icy globe is 39 times further from the Sun than Earth, this distance is immense, as a result, the Sun's temperatures will affect Pluto far less than the other planets. Pluto is covered in frozen solid water, solid carbon monoxide, solid nitrogen, and solid methane in today's solar system, all at 43 Kelvin or minus 230 Celsius. When the Sun is at its brightest, Pluto may heat up to 300 Kelvin or 27 Celsius, which is a suitable and pleasant temperature for living organisms. Between the freezing and boiling temperatures of water, assuming a dense environment, the journey to that peak could take millions of years. Of course, as a frozen item warms up, it loses a significant amount of sublimated material to the vacuum of space. Water, carbon monoxide, and other gases on the surface will simply evaporate. Even a dwarf planet with a gravitational pull as low as Pluto, roughly one-twelfth that of Earth, could maintain an atmosphere thick enough to protect humans from radiation from space. In other words, if the Sun becomes a red giant and all of the planets become inhospitable, Pluto may have a thicker envelope and potentially far more favorable conditions for life, becoming humanity's last refuge. A little planet for a massive species. What would life be like in such a little world in the distant future, despite being the only livable place in the solar system? Remember that Pluto is a small planet with a low gravity relative to Earth. Special structures would be required to keep people from floating away from the planet with gravity only 6% that of Earth. One of the most serious issues would be the dwarf planet's low gravity. Because of Pluto's low gravity, any structures built on its surface would have to be properly designed to be sufficiently stable and resistant to low gravity circumstances. While this would allow us to build massive structures without them collapsing under their own weight, anything hurled with too much force would be blown off into deep space, so forget about playing baseball on Pluto. Furthermore, Pluto's size presents substantial obstacles. Pluto, with a diameter of approximately 2,377 kilometers, is only around 18% the size of Earth and so does not have enough surface area to support all of humanity. If we suppose that the world's population of about 8 billion people needs to be relocated to Pluto, it would take vast resources to construct the facilities required to house and feed all of those people, think how many people we will be in several million years. Extremely advanced technology would be necessary to overcome these challenges. It would be essential to create livable structures capable of housing millions of people in extremely tight places, this would not be comfortable. To give air, water, and food to the human population, efficient and extremely complex life support systems would be required. Renewable energy systems would also be necessary to meet the dwarf planet's energy requirements. Terraforming Pluto or modifying its atmosphere and surface to make it more like Earth could be one option for making it more habitable. This method, however, would be complicated, but given that we would have no alternative, we would figure it out. Another big issue that future people will confront is a scarcity of natural resources. Pluto is a small planet with few natural resources, including oil, natural gas, minerals, precious metals, and a scarcity of water. As a result, advanced recycling and reuse mechanisms would be required to ensure that Pluto's resources are used efficiently and sustainably to support all of humanity. Furthermore, the lack of a natural environment on Pluto would have a severe impact on the human population's mental and emotional well-being. Life in a completely manufactured and isolated environment can be difficult and taxing, and particular precautions would be required to preserve the population's health and psychological well-being. Pluto, as a dwarf planet in the solar system's outer area, is believed to be deficient in natural resources required for human life, such as water and breathable air. However, the building of artificial ecosystems that can give the required resources to life could be a feasible answer to this dilemma. To build artificial ecosystems, scientists and engineers must collaborate to develop technology that can produce food, oxygen, and water from materials found on Pluto. This could include employing hydroponic farming techniques, in which plants are grown in an aqueous medium rather than soil, as well as developing air and water recycling systems to reduce reliance on terrestrial supplies, similar to those used on the International Space Station, but on a planetary scale. Furthermore, the use of renewable energy, particularly nuclear energy, might provide the necessary energy for habitable structures as well as food and water production systems. Creating artificial ecosystems on a minor planet like Pluto would be an incredibly intricate and difficult task. 
However, because humanity would have no other globe in which to seek sanctuary, they would be forced to do so. Only one stop, but not the final destination. Even if Pluto is the only inhabited planet in the solar system after the sun dies, it will not be saved from disaster. As the sun continues to increase in size and heat the entire solar system, Pluto would have only a few hundred thousand years, or potentially a million or two million years to bask in the grandeur of being the solar system's last livable world. Pluto, however, will be burned by radiation and the solar wind when the sun reaches its maximum temperature. Even the largest Kuiper Belt objects will be destroyed. Despite their great distances, worlds like Triton, Eris, and Pluto will get more than four times the energy from the Sun that Earth does now. Their atmospheres and surfaces, which are currently packed with various sorts of ice and maybe subterranean waters, will likewise completely vanish. When the Sun becomes red and the inner worlds are burned and consumed by the Sun, worlds like Pluto will be habitable for a short time before frying. They will lose all of their water and become barren worlds of rock and metal, similar to Mercury in miniature. There will eventually be no habitable worlds remaining in the entire solar system. But don't be discouraged, while every corner of the solar system will cease to be habitable, chances are that the human race, if it still exists by then, will manage to escape in time, building massive ships that transport each member of civilization to a new solar system, using Pluto as a brief stopover to prepare everything they need to embark on a journey to the stars, leaving behind the solar system where we were born while we embark on a journey to the stars. Alright everyone, that is all for this video, thanks for watching. What do you think about humanity's last refuge? Tell us in the comments and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our daily videos.